magnificent story, then begin by realizing that you are the author and every day you have the opportunity to write a new page. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Call the 17th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Berg. Here. Serta. Excuse. Davis. Excuse. Graf. Here. Hannah. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clionis. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Ryan. Here. Susha. Here. Vanderweel. Excuse. And Verhasselt. 13 present. Quorum is present. At this time, I'd ask Alderman Boren to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Approval of the minutes, President Burke. Uh, yes, thank you. I move for approval. Second. Motion and second to approve the minutes. Is there any discussion? There be a none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> this is dated today's date. Honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. All the person Renee Susha and all the person Vicki Meyer to be considered for appointment to the Group Health Insurance Committee to fill the unexpired terms of Alder Person uh, Eldon Berg and Alderman uh, Mark Hanna, whose terms expire 43007. These appointments are necessary to have the necessary representation from the Salary and Grievances Committee and the Risk Management Committee signed by the Mayor. These appointments are going to lie over, but before, as I do that, I want to explain what, what happened here is that Alderman President Burke and Alderman Hanna were, had been appointed, but the requirements for the Group Health Insurance Committee calls for a representative from each bargaining unit and a representative of the Salary and Grievances Committee and Risk Management Committees, the HR Department and the Finance. Neither of them were part of that. However, I recognize that in, uh, in both of these individuals we had some valuable talent and skill and while we can't accommodate both, I would like to accommodate Alderman Hanna here because he has an incredible wealth in, uh, in the area of insurance and money handling. So what I'll ask is I'll ask Attorney McLean to draft a resolution to include an alderman at large, giving us an additional alderman. This is an area that requires a lot of attention uh, now uh, because of the increasing rates in uh, health care. And it, it's imperative that we have some really, really... Uh, good uh, alderman there, and I think Alderman Hannibal would be uh, a great addition to that, and that's provided he accepts. But uh, that's what I'll come in and, and do. Are there any other? No. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney McLean. <coughs> Public forum, uh, Madam City Clerk. Uh, yes, we have Jeff Shuko. And Jeff, can I have your home address, please? Yes, ma'am. 2303 South 17th Street, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, your Honor, Your Honor, Council Members and Citizens, I would like to share with you an article that I ran across from the Jamesville Gazette, uh, published Friday, October 6, 2006. Uh, Jamesville Police Chief would consider hiring civilians to take some calls to save money as the city grows. The civilians would handle mundane issues such as animal complaints and traffic control, now handled by officers, Chief Neil Mahan said. The change would not affect the quality of service received by residents, he stated. The city would save money because it pays less to the Wisconsin Retirement Fund for civilians. Also, civilians earn less than officers. Some positions that were mentioned were record supervisor, clerical, crime prevention specialist, and he stated that in financially uh, strict times when you're looking for cost savings, these are some of the positions that can also be done by a civilian. He mentioned that uh, he's had experience working with people in some of these positions that are, were civilians and they did an excellent job. Some hoped that these additions would free officers to do the type of work that attracted them to policing in the first place, he stated. He mentioned Jamesville residents have priorities, and he's sure some of those priorities are not being addressed simply because officers are tied up with other duties. 
Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is in regard to animal complaints. And before I even read this article, I was going to consider proposing to the city that I'd be willing to take care of dog complaints and monitoring dogs in parks and on the beaches for the city along with bird control. This would be accomplished in working with our police chief by photographing violators and turning evidence into the police department. This would fall under the public domain, which actually anyone can do. I'd also like to state that using dogs as proposed by actually a friend of mine, Dave Colton, to the Public Protection and Safety Committee is fine for golf courses and small parks. But for our problems, dogs are not a complete answer. At the price that uh, he was charging Falls $400 a month for uh, one small park and using tactics that are self-perpetuating, I would have to question uh, the economics of making a move like that. And we in Sheboygan have a little different situation. We're dealing with city parks, school athletic fields, holding ponds, rooftops, and miles of beachfront. Running dogs where we don't want them is going to send the wrong message to the general public, which are the tactics that he uses. And I have also been informed that the city quite some long time ago had looked into animal control and found other counties in Wisconsin have countywide specialists. This problem was turned over to the county where nothing's been done since. The DNR does not have the resources or the manpower, nor do they have the cost-effective equipment that I've developed. The Great Lakes Coastal Management Grant Program does not provide funding until July, four months after projects of this nature need to be started to be cost-effective. And in working with the USDA, I can tell you that that involves the geese coming in to start the nesting season at that time of year, March, April, depending on the weather. Geese are not the main health threat, however. Gulls are. Goose droppings, for example, contain 15,000 particles of E. coli bacteria per gram in each in their droppings. Gull droppings, on the other hand, in comparison, contain, can contain over 268 million particles per gram. And I'd like to also note that there is no cure or treatment for E. coli bacterial infections, which are often fatal. And having our Having our children uh, engaged in athletic activities, which often do occur, skin abrasions and that sort of thing, unfortunately, can lead to con direct contact to the bloodstream with those sort of infections. And if I may, I just address another note that was brought up at our last council meeting. I looked into, I looked into uh, what, we, what we have for our situation down at the lakefront and I wanted to provide our fire, our fire chief with a little information for him to look into the turning radiuses of their emergency vehicles to address access for emergencies uh, at the South mm -hmm. Pier. And in looking at this, uh, which a couple people from WHBL looked into also, they found out that the Windsor program has never had a ship fire aboard any of their museum ships. Uh, therefore, I did, uh, I, in looking at this, had realized, though, in going down there and taking some measurements, that we really have no access for the Rockets for Schools program in an emergency, where they, in, in engaging in their activities, have people out on these docks, or out on the pier, I should say. And that would be a nice addition. In looking at this, I've determined me, that Jeff? we have a workable 78-foot turning radius. Excuse me, Jeff. Would you like an additional minute? If I may, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, we have a 78-foot turning radius to work with here for emergency vehicles. We could also, by running a 250-foot uh, drive back here, we could provide handicapped parking for citizens to more easily access the pier. In this way, we could actually engage in three functions with this one addition. We could provide emergency services for tourists visiting the USS Edson. We could provide access for the Rockets for Schools program to conduct their activities on the South Pier, which, by the way, I feel is an excellent location. And we could also provide handicap parking for everyone. Uh, in my trade, uh, I was schooled to solve problems and uh, not create them. Uh, and some of these, so in regards to some of these issues, uh, I would have to say uh, full speed ahead. And by the way, I'm not reckless in making rec recommendations like this, or I'd be saying all the head flank. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. <clears throat>
Next on the list is uh, Ross Worthington. And Ross, can you give me your home address, Certainly. please? 408 North Avenue. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council, um, I'm uh, here to uh, um, discuss the uh, proposed dog park on the uh, northeast uh, beach uh, area. And I noticed, uh, I looked up the agenda online uh, uh, earlier today, and I noticed this, this particular agenda is different than the one that I, uh, that I saw online. Uh, because the, the one online had actually said that there would be a recommendation uh, for modifying uh, the um, recommendation from that committee uh, excluding all reference to the uh, Northeast Dog Park area. So I'm not sure what happened with that, but that's exactly what I'd like to see happen is um, uh, um, I, don't, I don't think that uh, park falls in, um, that park area falls in under the recommendations that the dog committee had established. Uh, it's directly adjacent to a number of, of homes along that area. Uh, there's a soccer field there as well where children are playing. Um, and I, I think the biggest concern for us is, is safety. Um, you know, our, our children play on that beach. Um, it's, it's right by our house. We love to go down there and play. And we've already had issues with dogs off their leashes, uh, you know, jumping on our kids, running up, and, and, and things like that. And we just don't know who these dogs are. They're not under control. They're not on a leash, which, uh, you know, is, is the, the law in this, uh, in this city. And, and my concern is that, you know, if, if this is going to be... Um, allowed, then my children can no longer play in this area. I mean, it's, it's going to be restricted to dogs and the people with their dogs. Um, so I, I don't agree with, with that uh, proposal. Um, so uh, I think uh, the, uh, the dog park uh, study uh, committee had recommended removing this uh, particular park from uh, the recommendation, and I would support that um, uh, that particular uh, recommendation. So uh, that's all I have. I'm Thank going to keep it short. Thank you. And last would be Susan's. And is it Smize? Smeez. I'm sorry. And Susan, can I get your home address, please? 635 Mayflower Avenue. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Thank you. Um, I, too, am unclear as to where the resolution is at this point, but I am speaking on behalf of the Northeast Park as well. Um, for those of you who don't live in that area, um, the Northeast Park and the beach that it leads to truly is one of Sheboygan's treasures. It's a very wonderful location. And I'll start with telling you a little about the park. Um, pretty much from April through October, this park serves as an official practice site for many of the um, younger soccer teams in town. And even in between those scheduled practices, you'll quite often see those same children polishing up their skills in that area using the goals that have been provided. And I'm really not certain if those came from the city, or, um, but there are soccer goals that are on that particular park for that purpose. Um, and in the summer, you'll see parents um, helping their kids with different forms of baseball or softball because there's also a backstop on the southeast portion of that park. And so the, that's a good place for kids to play. My own kids have played kickball there many times because the diamond isn't perfectly marked off, but it certainly is in good enough shape that the kids can still play there. Um, in the fall, you'll see Sunday afternoon impromptu football games going on there by young people and sometimes by the men in the neighborhood who are probably past their prime and perhaps shouldn't be doing that anymore. But <laughs> that's part of the beauty of that park. It's all ages that are enjoying it. It's from little kids right on up to grandparents that like to take their little kids and grandkids there. And the same is true of the beach. Um, this jewel is really a source of relaxation and recreation and inspiration to many of us. Um, some just like to go down there and relax with a good book in a beach chair just listening to the water lap up on the shore. Um, walkers and joggers like to use that stretch from Northeast Park all the way to Valrath Park. It's a, a nice place that you can walk and jog in peace. And families enjoy picnic lunches, as Mr. Worthington indicated. They like to go down there with kids and grandkids and just uh, wade in the water and enjoy the beach there. And still others of it find it to be just a wonderful place to meditate and recharge spiritually. Um, some of you may believe that making this area into a dog park wouldn't necessarily prevent all those activities, but I think if you try to picture a soccer field 
um, where dogs are, and imagine kids trying to hone their soccer skills while they're trying to avoid dogs and the piles that the dogs leave behind. It's really not a safe or a healthy environment for kids. Um, and I know the intent is that that park, at least originally it was presented, that that would be an on-leash park. I don't think it's realistic to expect that if the dogs come in cars with their owners, that the owners will put a leash on the dog just to take it down to the beach, which isn't that far away. They're going to think they're here at the dog park, and they'll let the dogs. I'm seeing it happen already. I think with some of the publicity that's been in the papers, people think it's already a done deal, and I see cars pull up, and they, the dogs just come out and tear across the park right to the beach. So, um, well, the park certainly would be affected by having the dogs or the beach area, I think, would be even worse. The walkers and joggers would be chased by the dogs, um, maybe not aggressively, but even playfully, you don't know if you're a walker or a jogger whether that dog is safe or not, so it really prevents people who don't know those dogs from even using that area anymore. Um, relaxing in a beach chair would certainly be out of the question, and the serenity of that, that really gorgeous retreat area would be completely shattered. So I'm asking you um, to help us be able to maintain this park and those of us who enjoy using it, and there are many of us. And unlike many requests that I'm sure you get, we're not asking for any funding. We're just asking you to allow us to be able to enjoy this as we have in the past. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. I want to thank the public that addressed the council. Uh, Alderman Clayunas, do you have a comment? Thank you, Your Honor. I think there's a point of order. There was another appointment that was supposed to be listed for tonight. Well, we uh, thank you for pointing that out. Thank that you. deserves an explanation. You do have an appointment uh, to be considered for the Board of Contractor Examiners. The reason we're holding off on this is because the individual is yet to make up his mind. Okay, so when we get a full go ahead, then we'll bring it back. Okay, my apologies. Thank you. And before we go on to the consent agenda, I have an announcement to make. As you know, Mr. Tom Holton resigned effective December 13th, 5 p.m., and at that point we would have no city engineer and no director of public works to, uh, uh, to have problems or concerns addressed to. So I have been consulting with uh, the director of human resources at Zurich, uh, Mr. Tom Holton, uh, Paulette Andrews, and to some extent very little uh, with Attorney McLean regarding the salaries. And I made a decision to appoint um, an interim public works director and an interim city engineer. In the past, uh, Tom Holton occupied both positions. It used to be city engineer and public works. It was combined together and Tom Holton took uh, the responsibility of those both positions. We cannot do that in this instance because uh, of the qualifications that are required. So I think that it would work out just fine, and I have all full uh, faith and confidence in these two individuals, and I wanted to give you notice of that and introduce these individuals tonight. As interim director for six months, I have appointed Mr. Dave Beeble. And sir, if you would please rise. Thank you. And as interim city engineer, Mr. Bill Bulky, please rise. Now, there's two things I should point out, qualifications. As you know, Dave Beeble has worked for the city of Sheboygan for over 17 years, has done an incredible job as deputy director. It's only right, it's only fair to have him serve as interim. He can uh, make that determination. He may not like the job afterwards, be the head honcho, maybe he will. But it's, it's a great test time, test period for him to, to get the feel of what the responsibility are, are like, and then we will be talking about that. Also, Mr. Bill Balky has worked with the city engineer's office for a little over five years. He knows what's going on. He understands all the projects that are in place, and, and that is very important uh, to the city. So uh, I, I have full faith and confidence in these two individuals, and I know they will do a tremendous job for us. The other point I wanted to make is that you will probably hear that these two individuals have been, will be given, um, and I hope that the Salary and Grievance Committee approves it, a 4% increase. Uh, the 4% increase in salary is required by our code. Actually, there's a little bit more required uh, for the person who is going to replace an individual. It, you, the 
code calls for 8%. In this case, neither of them has taken all the responsibilities of Tom. They're taking half of it. So in all fairness and after discussions with them, uh, we all agreed that it was fair to, to uh, abide by the code instead of 8, 4%. And that's, that's what we, we will be proposing. So if you hear anything like that in the new community, uh, that's what we did. That's what we hope to do, I should say. And uh, that's fair and that's equitable to both. And I look forward to working with these two individuals. Thank you. Moving along, consent agenda, President Burke. Yes, so thank you, uh, Mr. Your Honor. Uh, I move to accept and file all ROs, uh, accept and adopt all RCs, and place the general ordinances upon their passage. Motion and second. Is there any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. <clears throat> Born? Aye. Berg? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Clionis? Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. And Verhassel? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 1720. We will be holding for 17. 55. To be referred, 1721 and 1722. Report of officers 2, 1723 will also be held for 1755. 1724 will also be held for 1755. And I may add, we're doing that because they all pertain to this dog run. It's some sort of a communication, a report of committee, a report of officer that's going to come back towards the end. Okay? 1725, that one we are going to hold, for, bear with me, for 1745 because that is the actual authorizing of the sale. And that's a communication that should be dealt with there. 1726 will be held for 17. 44. Please make a note of that. And then 1727 and 1740 through 1743 uh, will be referred. I'm sorry, 1727. What is 1743 there? 1727 through 43. Pardon me? Through 43. Through 43 yep. will be I'd like to file 1729. This was an issue that came up in public protection and safety uh, and was addressed during that time, so there would be no need to uh, refer the document. The parties are aware of the action. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Under discussion? Any more? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 729 is filed. Resolutions introduced three by 1744 by Alderman Meyer authorizing entry into a contract for the Harbor Center South Pier District soil stockpile removal of removal and disposal. And we're taking 1726 along with this. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like for ask for suspension of the rules. Is there a second? Is there any objection to that? There being none, please proceed. Um, this also includes 1726. And I would like to put uh, move ah, blah, to accept and file the RO and put the resolution upon its passage. Motion and second to put 744 upon its passage and file 726. Any discussion on that? There being none, please call the roll. Berg? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Susha, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. and Boren. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 1745 by Alderman Meyer, uh, by Alderman Montemayor, authorizing the sale of Lot 29, Northfield Meadows Subdivision, will also be uh, acting on 1725 to file. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask for suspension on 1745. Is there a sec second? Any objection to suspending the rules? There being none, please proceed. Thank you. I move the RO be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Any discussion further? There being none, please call the roll. Graf? Aye. 
Hannah. Kittleson. Aye. Lyunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Verhassel. Aye. Boren. Aye. And Berg. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 1746 by Alderman Radke, Ryan, Berg, Boren, and Verhassel establishing a special committee on policies and ordinances relating to license activity. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion that the resolution be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion to put uh, 1746 upon its passage. Yes. Under discussion. Under discussion, I would like to make an amendment to this uh, resolution on the first page in the last paragraph where it says before February 15, 2007. I'd like to amend that to the February 28, 2007. Is that a motion? That is a motion, sir. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on that? Yes, sir. Uh, under discussion, we have uh, put together this committee to look at how we handle some of the procedures in the Law and Licensing Committee. We're bringing in uh, license holders from throughout the different industries that we deal with, and we've been kind of slow getting this going, so we want to just give them a little bit more time to work on this and make sure we come up with some pretty good ideas. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Any further discussion? There being not on the amendment, please call the rule. You don't need a rule? Mm -mm. On the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Now we need a motion to put the resolution as amended. Upon this pass. Motion to put the resolution upon this pass. As amended. Second. Second. Any discussion on that? There being none, we do need a roll call mm -hmm. on this one. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. Berg, Aye. and Graf. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. To be referred 1747 through 1749. Report of Committee 6, 1750. That is going to be held again for 1755. Report of Committee 7. 1751 by law and licensing rec submitting the facts and findings of the quasi judicial hearing held regarding contractors license number 1334 and recommending revoking the license. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion to uh, accept and adopt the report of committee. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion, Scott Martell here this evening. He's not here this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Graf? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 1752 by law and licensing, submitting the facts and findings of the quasi-judicial hearing held regarding beverage operators license number 7096 and recommending suspending the license for six months. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion is uh, Nicole Huffman here this evening. She's not here this evening, Your Honor. Thank you. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Clionis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Verhasselt, Boren, Aye. Berg, Aye. Graf, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Kittleson. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, excuse me. What is, what is this? Seventeen fifty three uh, will be held for S two dash one on page nine and that deals with that particular agreement. Seventeen fifty four by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number seventy three oh six based on her in ineligibility to hold the license. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion is Christy Walski here this evening. She's not here this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Any further discussion? 
There being none, please call the roll. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. And Clyunas. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Report of committees 8. 1755 by Public Works recommending adopting the recommendations outlined in the Board of Parks and Forestry Dog Study Subcommittee's final recommendations making the city parks system pet friendly with the additional recommendations to add snow fencing for the off-leash dog area, signage for a $125 fine for those not cleaning up their waste as well as indicating the park itself as an on-leash area will supply waste receptacles and waste bags. This is the one where we held all those communications. Alden Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would like to go back to items number 1720, 1723, 1724, and 1750. And I'd like a motion to accept and place on file. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Under discussion, any? Under discussion, well... We're, we're to the point now where we've dealt with all these issues and um, it's, we're just going to accept and file them. Okay, very good. Thank you. Is that it? And then... You don't need a roll call on that. Wait, I'm sorry. There's somebody. Alden Susha. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, when you just say we're going to accept and file for the public's sake, could somebody just give us a synopsis of exactly what we're doing here? Thank you. The accept and file means that the committees have already, the respective committees have looked at that, at the particular issues, discussed it, made their recommendations, and if there were recommend, recommendations to be made, these particular items being uh, items to, to accept and file or whatever concerns or recommendations are in there will be incorporated into the main uh, report of committee that's coming up for passage tonight. Okay, anything else you would like for me to clarify? No. It's very typical for communications and, and uh, documents like these to be accepted and placed on file so that other matters can be dealt with in another resolution. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, are we going to be, uh, with this, are we going to be taking care of the concern of the people that spoke at the public hearing tonight then? So this, this, this area that they're talking about then is going to be out of bounds for unleashed dogs. Is that my understanding? That is the understanding that's, that an alderman may, will probably make that motion or amend it. All yes. right. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Anything else? We don't need a roll call. We're making, uh, there's a motion to accept and file all those documents. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 1755, Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Now moving on to 1755, um, I would make a motion that the resolution be put upon its passage. To accept and adopt report of committee, put the resolution upon its yes. passage. And there's a second under discussion. Under discussion, I would like to also amend that to to the original final recommendations by deleting all references to the Northeast Park and Northeast Park Beach area. And I would make a motion to amend that. Second. Motion and second to amend. Under discussion on the amendment, Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. I think this is a wise move. Uh, the people in this area have spoken that they absolutely do not appreciate dogs in their backyards. And I think we need to listen to them as a council, sir. And therefore, I do highly recommend that we omit the, uh, the uh, northern park area from this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. And I, do, I do support that amendment. Uh, that is a, a great gesture of being responsive to the citizens of Sheboygan. Any other discussion? Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, too, uh, support the amendment. And I wanted to publicly thank the, uh, the members of the Dog Study Subcommittee. Uh, they put in, like most of our committees, they put in endless hours. And it's always difficult to make everybody happy. And uh, I, open government's not necessarily pretty, but it works. Mm -hmm. And this is just a case in point of it working and listening to citizens. Good point, Alderman Hanna. Thank you. <laughs> Alderman Matty. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, my only concern ongoing is enforcement. And I want us to keep that in mind and see if we might be doing something as we move ahead. I'm appreciating the work that's been done, but uh, that's an issue that's applicable to the whole city, and there's no clear enforcement except self-enforcement at this point. 
that may need to change in the future. And we will be looking at that. Thank you, Alderman Matty. Alderman Clay Eunice. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm always a stickler for details. Who's going to pay for the bags? Um, bags are mentioned here. You know, who will, is that a park service then? A park will put it in that budget to have these bags supplied on a regular basis? And That will be an issue for finance to discuss or the public <laughs> works. Yes, good question. Anything else? Mayor. Yes, uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so one, I indicated, I think I indicated this uh, when this was before the council previously, before it got referred back to the committee. Uh, a lot of these park regulations are by ordinance as far as dogs and parks. And uh, to effectuate these recommendations, it's going to require ordinance changes. That's true with the, the fines and so forth also. So uh, I would view this as whatever action is taken, assuming <coughs> something is passed, that that would uh, be an indication to our office to draft the necessary ordinances, and those would have to then be coming back to council for implementation. And I would concur with that. Mayor. Thank you. Yes, Madam City Clerk. Um, Alderman Meyer, can we incorporate into the motion the ending part of here that Public Works said to add the snow fencing? Can that be an official part of the motion also? Yes. Thank you. And who second? Concur? Thank you. Okay, on the amendment only, we will call the you don't need to, on the amendment. All those in favor? Oh, Alderman Montemayor. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, where would the snow fencing be? Because it's not going to be at Northeast Park any longer. Well, in the um, RC, it said the final recommendations, they want the additional to add snow fencing for off-leash areas in general. Signage in general. for 125, fine. Thank you. I just thank want you. that as part of the motion, if that's thank all right. You. Okay. On the amendment, all those in favor say aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And now, uh, Alderman Meyer, a motion to put the resolution, uh, accept and adopt the reporter committee and put the resolution upon upon its passage as amended? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? We will call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Racky? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? No. For Hasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg, Aye. Graf, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, and Manny. Aye. 12 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 1756 by finance recommending authorizing disbursement of the City of Sheboygan's 2006 CDBG funds for the 24th entitlement period to various recipients to promote economic development, create jobs, aid minority groups, develop and upgrade housing, and assist low and moderate income people. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to address our attention to the 140,000 grant to Home Inc. and point out that 100,000 of the 140 is, in fact, a loan. It's not an outright grant. Uh, the terms of that loan are open-ended with 0% interest. The loan would not be necessarily repaid until the building is sold. Uh, I don't know that that um, actually then would serve the purpose of the fund. The loan fund is meant to be circulating to help those agencies to take care of capital needs in an ongoing way. And I don't think that that would well serve the city for that money to be tied up for potentially 30 plus years. So I move to change the terms of the contract for that loan as follows. From a $100,000 loan at 0% with no timeline of repayment to the same amount, $100,000, at a 0% interest rate at a five-year term of repayment. And by way of information, in their 2005 uh, budget statements, income statement with the federal government, the 990 form, that does publicly state that they had a $30,000 net revenue increase over expenses, uh, income over expenses for the year. So I deem that probable that they can so repay the loan in the five-year term. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Is that motion appropriate to change that? Is there a second? Second. Under discussion. Any more? Alderman Boring. 
Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I was wondering if maybe Paulette, Paulette Enders could, uh, could address this as far as the legalese of us being able, or the city attorney, uh, of us being able to, to change these terms from an from a indefinite repayment period to a definite repayment period? Okay. Thank you. Paulette, would you please step up? Alderman Hanna will be with, no? Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. Um, you can change the terms, but um, just for everyone's knowledge and background, um, the city's done this in the past where they've loaned dollars to you know, not-for-profits that are 0% interest and are deferred until the building is sold. Um, some examples are Sheboygan County Interfaith, um, Safe Harbor, and the Anne Marie Home, and that one was actually sold and then paid back. So this one, what's a little bit different about this one is that there's a grant and a loan. Um, we have typically done the loans in the past. And uh, like I said, I, I'm quite sure that you can change the terms if you wish, but really isn't anything different than what we have done in the past. Any other questions? Alderman Hanna for Paul? Thank you. Uh, can I ask a Please. question? Thank you very much. Um, in the fund that could possibly be loaned out into the community, uh, is there a current balance as what's available in funds in that? Just, um, I was asked that question tonight, yeah. and I'm, I'm just off the top of my head, I'm guessing at about $800,000, and that's used for housing rehabilitation. Uh, how many capital requests did we have this year? Zero. Well, I, <laughs> again, off the top of my head, I don't think that we had any other ones. Thank you. Hold on, we got President Burke to the floor. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, um, Homic, that is the organization, is uh, Mr. Henry Capitillo, the chief executive officer of that, uh, that organization? Is that true? Uh, or the, the grant applicant. Uh, and I guess the question I have, has he been part of the loop in terms of discussing the changes? Not that I'm aware of, unless someone else has talked to him. I guess this, this causes me some concern is to move this ahead on council floor without uh, uh, asking the individual to see if this would have any impact on his operation. I guess the question I would have regarding the urgency of this matter is it incumbent upon us that we act on this, this evening? Does this document have some urgency? Well, Ed, would be able to answer that? Um. I, I would think that you could, you, know, you might want to pass the other ones, and if you have a question with that one, hold it. Um, what happens is all of these agencies are waiting for funds, and they've been waiting for months. Okay. And so we have been getting calls, mm -hmm. when are the contracts going to be approved so that we can disperse mm -hmm. funding? Uh, then given that, uh, on the amendment, I would like to hold the line item that specifically deals with Home Incorporated, if that would be a legal motion. Referring back to McLean. Uh, well, I guess I would suggest you might want to divide the question and remove right. that portion of it. Uh, if that's if the intent is to act separately on that. That's, that's what I'd yes, Thank you. Uh, give, given that advice, I would like to divide the question, uh, excluding uh, Home Incorporated from the uh, uh, larger body except there's an amendment. We will have to act on home first, I believe. Okay, hold on a there's an amendment. <clears throat> the amendment is to change the terms and conditions of a particular recipient. You would like to hold that for a later <laughs> day. Don't confuse us anymore. <laughs> Over Thank you. Your Honor, if it would help the process, I would rescind my motion. And then it could be moved to be held, dividing the question. And we can look at that in a broader basis way. Would oh, that be helpful? Better yet. Yes, sir. Thank I you. I so rescind my motion. Thank you. All in present, Bird. Yes, and I will move for the division of the question to hold uh, the line item that uh, deals with Home Incorporated and then put the rest of the document on its passage. Okay. 
Basically, what dividing the question means is you're going to vote on one issue, on some issues, and not on the other one. Mm -hmm. Just as our President Burke has explained, under discussion, dividing the question, are we done with Paul, let's see, Alderman Graf, you're up. Thank you, Your Honor. Under division. Back to um, uh, Paulette. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, Finance Committee looked at all these, reviewed all of these along with Paulette and her staff, and um, we spent, I would say, a good three, four weeks going through this, interviewing all these prospective um, parties and, uh, and talking with them all. I think it's only right that uh, Alderman Berg's um, motion be made, but uh, as Paulette has pointed out in the past, we've done this same thing, and um, I don't remember the exact conversation that we had with Home Inc., but uh, I know uh, we all felt comfortable uh, with, with granting them this loan request, so uh, just to say that. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Turn them clean, and then we'll go to Alderman. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, my only concern is uh, apparently there's two portions to the Home Inc. Uh, provision. Part is a forty thousand dollar grant, apparently, and then there's a hundred thousand dollar loan. And uh, you know, I don't know what their situation is as far as the forty thousand dollar grant. If they need that money, I, I assume, like most nonprofits, that they needed it two months ago. Uh, so I'd be a little concerned about holding up on that aspect of it. Perhaps uh, you could just hold up on the, the loan amount. Uh, but I, I don't want to confuse things more than they already are. They're pretty confused. Okay. <laughs> We're back. President Berg, would you like to rephrase? Yes, or? if I could. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I would like to rephrase the motion to uh, put the... Uh, resolution upon this passage with the exception of $100,000 loan that is to be made to Home Incorporated. Is there a second to that? Okay. Under discussion on that. Alderman Hand. Yes, thank you. It's my understanding I, from reviewing the Home Inc. file and the request that the entire $140,000 was going to be used towards a specific capital project. That $40,000 isn't going to be used for operating okay. needs, so it, it didn't really need to be changed the way you initially had it would have worked just fine. But uh, but, but in, in this case, I think it's appropriate in this way because it, the issue is not it's a loan. The grant, it's a loan. Um, and I think the the public needs to be made aware that uh, Pete Fullerton and, and Paulette have a have a rigorous procedure, and before any of the funds are dispersed, all of the files of those organizations that are going to receive fund. She double checks to make sure that all the requirements, all the audited statements, all that's in place. Um, so they, they take their fiduciary responsibility very seriously. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm actually about three people behind now in this discussion because I was going to bring up what, uh, what Attorney McLean had brought up. Um, but as uh, uh, Alderman Graf had said, uh, this was uh, reviewed uh, vigorously. Um, by, by finance, I believe, on, uh, on, on, on uh, uh, granting these block grants, and it was under discussion for several weeks, and everybody seemed comfortable with this at the at the time. Uh, that this, you know, everybody was comfortable with the uh, hundred thousand dollar loan to uh, uh, Home Inc. under these terms. Um, so I, you know, at this point, uh, I think it, that should be taken into consideration upon reviewing changing of those terms, uh, I do agree that at this point that uh, we should take this out as a line item uh, to be discussed separately. But I think that should definitely be kept in mind that uh, over several weeks when this was discussed in committee, everybody was comfortable with this at that point. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a, a question for Paulette. Um, being that the total $140,000 is set aside for one specific project, if this committee, if the Common Council decides to change the terms down to five years for the $100,000 and we give $40,000 in grant, what would happen if there was a default on the payment or if they decide they can't pay back in five years and if we approve the $40,000 for this project, then what happens? If I can get this, if I understand what your question is, it's a total of about a one hundred and eighty thousand dollar project. They're asking for one forty from the city, one hundred is a loan, and forty is a grant. My guess is, if we 
you know, grant them the money and the loan doesn't go through, we would reimburse based on actual costs. They wouldn't be able to undertake the project. Um, they do, you know, as Alderperson Hannah had mentioned, they meet all the qualifications as far as their um, low-income population. It's an elevator for handicap accessibility. And that Pete and I had mentioned at the meeting that that $100,000 typically isn't handled through this process. It goes through the Housing Rehab Committee. Um, it's a loan, and it's revolving loan funds. The 40 is the actual, the new money, the entitlement. And that's what makes this one a little bit different. And we had initially asked that it kind of be pulled out of this process and we handle it differently, but, you know, a determination was made to actually put it into this language. Thank you, Paulette. On the motion, do you have it? We have a motion out there to divide the question to whole line item regarding home inks, $100,000 part of the whole piece. So there's a motion mm -hmm. to divide the question. We need a majority to divide it. And please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. And Meyer. 12 ayes, 1 abstention. Motion passes. Now we need to, to vote on the, on the main motion. Alderman President Burke. Uh, yes, I ask that the uh, motion be placed upon its passage. Second. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Right. Alderman Graff. Which portion are we voting on? We just voted to divide the question. We didn't right. vote on it yet. Right. Right. So okay. now we're voting on the motion to approve. Where are we? Everything except? Except that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I understand. Okay. Please call. And this is on 1756. So everything except the one line item is what you're voting on right now. Racky. Hi. Ryan. Hi. Susha. <clears throat> Verhassel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Gittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 12 ayes, 1 abstention. Motion carries. Now we need to send the other one somewhere. Or what was your pleasure, no. Alderman Berg, with this when one line we, item? When referred back. To the committee, to the finance committee. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I think if we could perhaps refer that back to the finance committee and ask if uh, Mr. Capitillo could meet with them to discuss any changes in the terms and any recommendations that would be coming forward. Okay. Is there a second to that? Second. second. Under discussion on the referral to the finance committee on that particular loan only. Alderman Susha. Um, thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to choose to abstain from this discussion. And I know that Alderperson Clyhunas has been abstaining on this all along, and I'm, I'm just not sure if um, anyone else on the committee is going to be abstaining, but we might not have a quorum, so perhaps it should go somewhere else. You, uh, that's two of you. We would have Alderman Graf, uh, Alderman Barn, and Alderman Hanna. That would be three yet. We have Alderman Hanna next, sir. That's it. Thank you, Mayor. I'm just... Uh, can I address a question to Attorney McLean? Please, Attorney McLean. Thank you. I'm, I'm concerned that if we, if we move to shorten the term and there is a situation where there's a default when the balloon payment is due in five years, what recourse do we have against Home Inc. and the 60 residents? Uh, I'm not familiar with the loan document at all, Alderman Hanna, so I don't know what the recourse is, to be honest. Uh, not familiar with uh, any of this. I haven't been any attending any of the finance committee meetings, so I honestly don't know. Okay. At, at this point, it may be, but it, it, let it go to finance. Let them discuss it. If you have any questions before, you may want to address those questions in writing either to me or Attorney McLean and Paulette Anders or them and copy me. And then we can take it from there. Alderman Hanna, we have Alderman Graff. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I was just wondering, rather than sending it to financing, this is a, um, uh, a decision that that is uh, started basically in the Department of City Development and so forth uh, between uh, Ms. Enders and uh, Mr. Fullerton that uh, maybe uh, they would call Mr. Um, Capitillo in and, uh, and discuss these these new arrangements and so forth with them and, and find out what he feels about this and is he does he really want this loan under these conditions or um, you know I think they that they should check with him before it's brought back to finance um, so that we know if if we really have to do something or not if he withdraws from from getting this loan, I, I don't see we have an issue. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be appropriate if it gets referred to finance for you as, as chair to make that uh, recommendation to Paula Anders to do that before it even gets to you, which I think they could do. Would that be okay? Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I assume that the reason we want to send it back to finance, or to, uh, to some committee, but probably finance, is so that now that Alderman Manny has expressed his concerns about things, they can find out um, the information from Mr. Capitillo or from Home Inc. And it's simply information gathering because I would imagine it'll come back here for us to decide yay or nay. Thank you. Alderman Verhessel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd also, I guess, I think it's a good idea to send it to the Finance Committee, but I'd like to ask that the appropriate city official, Paulette Enders, attain the audited income statement, which is still a missing part of the application prior to that meeting. I think that would be beneficial to that meeting. And you can make that request to pull at any time. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I do have some concern here, just the way this has come up and this being uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Capitello, who has been in front of this council in some uh, controversial manner. I just think that uh, the the council and the committee uh, should take caution on appearances on this. That you know, if they were comfortable with this through several weeks of debate in the committee, uh, that we we do keep that in mind in, in in dealing with this in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, on the referral to finance, right? Yep. Okay. Please call the roll. Ryan. Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Warren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Graf? Abstain. Hannah? Abstain. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Abstain. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Radke. Aye. Nine ayes, four abstentions. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 1757 through 1758 lies over. 1759 through 1760 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 1646, resolution number 175607 by Alderman Hanna, Clayunas, Susha, and Boren, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 06 budget. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would move that the <clears throat> 1759, uh, let's see, that would be, sorry. Resolution be put upon his passage. Is there a second? Motion and second to put 1646 upon his passage under discussion. There being none, please call a roll. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. And Ryan? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 1655, 1656, 1652, and 1653. You could take all at once, President Burke. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Your Honor. I would move that the ordinances be placed upon their passage. Second. Motion and second to put all four upon their passage. Any discussion? There being none, please. Alderman Clayunas. 
I'm sorry, Your Honor. Do we have the right numbering on these? It, it's actually 1657. It's the, the agenda number is 55, 56, 57, 58. The ordinance numbers are 50, 51, 52, and 53. Oh, okay. All right. Not here. Well, okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Please call the roll. For Hasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. and Susha. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. S2-1, resolution number 180607 by Alderman Hanna, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the development agreement with Mutual Realty of Wisconsin, LLC, regarding the capsule pro property project. Alderman Hanna. Thank you. I move that resolution uh, 180607 <clears throat> be put upon its passage. And, and file 1753? And file 1753. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Ionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. and Verhasselt. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 1761 and RC by the Special Committee on Risk Management recommending filing documents submitting a claim from Jerome Miller for alleged damages to his vehicle when he was parked in a city truck, hit his vehicle, and paying the claim in the amount of $3,625. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. That along with 1762, which is an RC by the Special Committee on Risk Management recommending filing documents submitting a claim from Angela Ramos for alleged damages to her vehicle when paint cans in the garbage truck splattered paint on her vehicle and denying that claim and directing the city attorney to send a notice of disallowance. I would move that both of the RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second to accept both. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Burke, Aye. Graf, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. and Born. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 1763, a resolution by Alderman Ryan approving the terms and conditions of the ground lease and contract for lease of land between the Redevelopment Authority and New Horizons Investments. Inc. Alderman Ryan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move to suspend the rules. Second. Motion and second to suspend. Any, any objection to suspension? There being none, please proceed. Excuse me, Your Honor. Uh, uh, attorney, please. please. Your Honor, I, I would just indicate that I don't think that's necessary. Alderman Ryan uh, talked with the developer's attorney. Uh, you can't sign any documents until the 20th anyway, so uh, they don't have a problem with just having it lay over in its natural course and act on the... I withdraw on, then, Your Honor. Please. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. 16, 1763 lies over. 1764, 1765 lies over. 1766 will be referred to finance. Please refer to you, page 10, amended. 1767 will go to Committee of the Whole. 1768 will go to committee, Special Committee on Risk Management. 1769 will go to Public Protection and Safety. 1770, a resolution by Alderman Ryan directing a, a public hearing regarding a change in the text of the zoning ordinance to repeal and recreate sections of the historic preservation regulations relating to certificates of appropriateness and recognition of historic structures, sites, and districts. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second to put 1770 upon its passage. Under discussion. Uh, this was uh, uh, drafted by Attorney McLean, Your Honor, um, regarding the uh, Historic Preservation Committee. And uh, we need to uh, hold a public hearing in order to uh, uh, change the, uh, the zoning ordinance. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Ratke. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a friendly amendment to this public hearing, if I could, please. It says that notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held at 7 o'clock p.m. January 2nd, 2007, in the Common Council Chambers of the City Hall. Unfortunately, the Common Council is meeting that same evening because that's the first Tuesday after Monday, January the 1st, so we will be in session at the same time. So I don't know what they would like to do with it. And January 9th is what I was told because uh, there was a conflict in this room with the Law and Licensing Committee at the same time, so I'm assuming we would amend this January the 9th. Okay, thank you, Alderman Reckley. Madam City Clerk? Um, this will be held at the Council meeting. That's what we do. We hold this public hearing right at the council meeting. So that's, I just have to get published and everything. Okay. It's fine. Okay. As you will recall, sometimes we have public hearings listed here. That, that's how it will show up on your agenda. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second to put 1770 upon its passage. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1771 will be referred to City Plan Commission. Other matters, Attorney McLean. 1772 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Randy Ingalls, chairman of ice bowling at Blue Line Sheboygan, requesting permission to close Wildwood Avenue from New Jersey Avenue to the Blue Line Ice Center and Juleson Court from South 22nd Street to Wildwood for the weekend of ice bowling March 16th and 17th, 2007. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 1773 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2007 and June 30, 2008. That will be referred to Law and Licensing Committee. 1774 is a communication from Amy Detloff, 1917 North 24th Street, asking if the parking traffic situation at Cooper School is being looked at or considered for improvements as it's a matter of the children's safety. That will be referred to 1774. 17. I mean, public protection and safety. <laughs> okay. 1775 is a preliminary resolution declaring intent to exercise the police power to levy special assessments for resurfacing various streets. That will be referred to public works. 1776 is a resolution to authorize the transfer of appropriations in the 2006 budget. That will go to finance. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. We stand adjourned. Let's go.